Hi everyone and welcome to the final session in the working in the think tank sector event today. Uh, we've got about 20 minutes to think about the role of membership organisations and how they differ and interact with think tanks. Um, and to help us do that, we have a wonderful panel of speakers, including uh, Denise Hawkes from the Royal Economic Society. Uh, we have Adash Ramchurn from the RSA, uh, Jonathan Shaw and Clive Gilbert from Policy Connect. Uh, we'll shortly be giving you a brief introduction, but just to explain the format, uh, after we've been around the panel, we'll be taking some questions via the Q&A function um, at the bottom of your screens here. Uh, so do be submitting questions uh, as we speak, or you can raise your hand a little bit later if you would like to speak to us directly. Uh, in all likelihoods, we probably won't be able to get to all of your questions today, um, but don't worry, they won't go to waste. Uh, there will be an FAQ that will follow up. Uh, so just to briefly introduce myself, uh, I'm Graham Griffiths. I'm the Assistant Director at the Living Wage Foundation. And we're a membership organisation in the sense that we built a network of over 7,000 accredited living wage employers who all pay their staff according to the cost of living. Uh, but I also think of us very much as a campaign organisation building intelligence and power in order to influence social change. I've worked at the Living Wage Foundation for about five years now, overseeing the growth and retention of our membership, which has secured pay rises for a quarter of a million people and put £1.3 billion back into the pockets of low paid workers. So I'm going to be going around the panel now. Um, Denise, if I come to you first, are you um, happy to give yourself a bit of an introduction? Yeah, I am. Thank you very much. So I'm Denise and um, my day job is as um, Head of Department of Economics and International Business at the University of Greenwich. I'm also a visiting professor at UCL, Institute of Education. And the reason why that's important is that Royal Economic Society is a learned society and a membership organisation. And the point of a learned society is to promote the subject of interest. And of course, the, the game is in the title. It is economics that this is the point of being um, promoted at RES. Um, my role at Royal Economic Society is was the chair of Education and Training Committee. So I'm just entering my second year of this role. And the point of the committee is to kind of bring, um, build a, a, a working group together with academic economists and the staff at RES to build um, our education and training activities. And they range from everything from undergraduate economics all the way up to professors like myself and CPD events for professional economists. And the point of all those activities is to just bring together the biggest minds in economics and, and those who are interested in economics and try to get new thoughts and, um, in the field. And there's a kind of, we have an annual conference, the Royal Economic Society Conference, and um, big journals, but the big piece of it is promoting economics and public understanding of economics and mostly done through Discover Economics campaign, which is a real innovation and, and something that I'm really proud that the Royal Economic Society does um, to reach out and try to encourage people who do not look like the usual economists to join. So um, very happy to talk about learning societies and how they interact with the disciplines and, and economics in general. Thank you, Graham. Thanks so much, Denise. Uh, Adash, do you want to go next? Yep, thank you, Graham. Um, so my name is Adash, and I'm a social change apprentice uh, at the RSA, so the Royal Society of Arts. Um, and alongside my apprenticeship, I'm also studying at university at Queen Mary. Um, so I'm part-time studying and part-time working at the RSA. So I'm fairly new to the think tank sector. Um, and I would say my experience of the think tank sector has been really good so far um, and learning so much about um, how the sector is progressing and the sorts of research and policy work that the RSA are doing. Um, so the RSA, they really focus on social change and coming up with ideas and research to help policymakers um, improve their policies. And they cover a, a wide range of areas um, such as uh, economy, education, um, also heritage. Um, the, yeah, just a wide range of areas I, I could really be going on all day um, for how many areas the RSA really focus on. Um, and 
unlike some uh, organizations in the think tank area, we're also a member membership organization. So we have the think tank and the membership side of uh, our organization. So we have um, our members who we call fellows um, who really, really help us uh, contribute with great uh, research and ideas and help us carry out um, our, our objectives to help promote social change and make society a better place. Um, so yeah, that's that's me and that's a bit about the RSA. Thanks, Adash. Um, and Jonathan, you're going to introduce yourself and Policy Connect, and I gather you have some slides. On behalf of Clive and myself, uh, I'm going to introduce a few slides. So let's just... Uh, okay. Um, so Policy Connect is a membership organisation and we're a think tank. So it's a bit of a, a hybrid and we work in four uh, main uh, policy pillars, education and skills, uh, industry, technology and innovation, sustainability, which is climate change, uh, resources uh, and energy and health and accessibility. And Clive is my colleague in the health and accessibility team. And Clive's uh, specialty is in assistive technology. So we support um, a number of different all party parliamentary groups, commissions and forums. And we work with uh, parliamentarians, uh, civil servants, businesses. We bring all of those together for discussion. Uh, we have roundtable events and we write uh, reports. And tomorrow we're publishing a report on health and climate change uh, called uh, a, a Green Bill of Health. So look out for that. And that's been chaired by Hilary Benn MP, former Environment Secretary, and Lord Ian Duncan, a Conservative who was a former uh, climate change minister. So this is me and Clive. Um, so we're a social enterprise and we have our income via a membership subscription and sponsorship for our projects. We're a disability confident uh, employer employing uh, disabled people, uh, London Living Wage employer. So pleased to support you, Graham, in the excellent work that you do at uh, London Living Wage. And indeed, I think uh, some former uh, Policy Connect staff are working at uh, the London Living Wage as well. And we're a member of Social Enterprise UK. We think that um, if you are one of these organisations, it's important to support the sector. And so we're really pleased to support uh, the Resolution Foundation today in this excellent uh, initiative. Okay, so, so we work with uh, parliamentarians and we're just focusing on Clive's work for the all party parliamentary assistive technology group. It's led by these two parliamentarians, a Labour MP and a Conservative uh, peer. And we have say events uh, looking at assistive technology, how it can assist uh, disabled people become more independent in employment, in education uh, and in living. These are uh, some of the MPs and peers that support us and right across the house. It's a pretty stimulating work. Our uh, office is often uh, House of Par Houses of Parliament, um, organising uh, meetings uh, there um, or in ordinary times. But of course, we've been all doing this uh, for the last year, but hopefully not for too much longer. My background, I was an MP for 13 years and a government minister in various different departments, including I was Minister for Disabled People. So it's an area of particular interest for my own. These are a number of the organisations that support us, particularly in the assisted technology area. They range from uh, businesses to universities to charities. Uh, that's a reflection of 300 or so uh, members that support us in our work. So just to tell you about Clive, he joined uh, the team in, in 2019. He's an expert in social care and assistive technology. As you'll see, Clive is um, a very well qualified person. He's got an outstanding education. Um, he's worked in freelance, but this was the first permanent position uh, that Clive uh, had. And he asked me to say that, um, well, that um, he uses uh, an electric wheelchair, a chin operated joystick and eye tracking technology. And uh, Clive uh, has um, access to work, which funds his uh, PA, Genevieve, um, and an adjustable office desk um, in our office in Great Dover Street. So that is Policy Connect, Clive and myself. 
Thank you, Jonathan and Clive. That is um, great to hear from you all. So do keep your questions coming in. We've had a few um, already. Um, Denise, if you don't mind, I'll come to you first. Um, we've had a question about how we measure the impact of our work. Um, have you got any insights on that? Yeah, I think um, within kind of in terms of the committee structures and so on, we, we work, we've been recently working through um, identifying KPIs. So what Res has um, established some four, four objectives that we want to target towards. And I wrote them down, I can't find it right now, but essentially around, again, promoting economics, promoting excellence, diversity in economics. And so all of the KPIs of the various projects that each of the committees come up with are around those strategic objectives for the, for the society. And um, so we, you know, we collect data as we do events, for example, we will run some CPD events for economists and we will collect some information about who accesses those events, who, who, who um, takes part, who wants to take part, and then we'll evaluate those in terms of did we make a difference um, in terms of our KPIs. And the other thing about how we um, do that is obviously we've got a very strong comms team and, and they will measure how much, um, how much airtime we have, I guess. So we've got a very strong comms team that will also look at how we're raising the profile and changing the narrative. So it's a combination really, but usually two KPIs. Thanks, Denise. Um, and Adash, if I could come to you, I was wondering, I mean, if you could tell me maybe a little bit about how your role might interact with um, the work of think tanks and uh, if, I guess thinking about how uh, the RSA differs from work at think tanks. Um. That's a good question. Um, I think in terms of the research and the, the membership side of the organization are very connected. And I think that's one of the RSA's biggest strengths in the sector in that there's like a connected feedback loop where fellows are able to contribute to ideas and present research and policy um, suggestions. And the RSA can then therefore take that forward in the work that they produce and the research that they do. So I think it's a really um, exciting thing that the organization has and it's very different to um, some organizations that are in the sector where they're very policy focused or research focused but maybe not so focused on the, who, the audience or who they're trying to produce it for. I think that's one of what, what makes the RSA really exciting, um, the connection between the fellows uh, and the research uh, and the thinking that goes behind our work. So yeah. Thank you, Adash. And Clive, if I could come to you, um, could you tell us a little bit more about the um, uh, your membership and the, the role they play within your organisation? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite a way of being you from, 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 from private companies, colleges, universities, and they help uh, Fund our work and know that that that's only made for APPs. But the picky, the picky one in investing our program of work. We have built, we have built, we yeah, and practice, and we have annual get to give uh, Clive, um, apologies, I've only just seen how I can uh, type that, so if, if it's all right with you, I'll just repeat what you just said. Yeah. Um, the members range from private companies and charities and universities. They all help fund your work, um, and there's no statutory funding for APPGs. Um, they play a key part in delivering your programme or developing the programme of work and that you work closely with members and they give insights into the sector for both policy and practice. 
Thank you, Clive. Um, that's really helpful. Jonathan? Yeah, just uh, I think um, just in addition to that, I think it's important that um, in joining uh, Policy Connect, these members, um, they know that the content and the editorial is, is ours. And so it's not, we're not there as a trade body, as it were. Um, we're there very much as a policy development and to influence uh, policy. So they sign a, a code of governance that says, you know, the policy and uh, the editorials with us and the parliamentarians we work with, which is an important uh, part of our independence and uh, they support that. Thank you. And I mean, obviously, the, the Living Wage Foundation, our membership is made up of responsible employers around the country who will pay the living wage to their staff. And I guess the, the, the role that they play within our organisation, we very much see it as a movement. Um, so they, they play a very active role in uh, celebrating their own accreditation, but also uh, championing and uh, advocating for others to pay the living wage too, trying to build the brand of being a living wage employer and activate other people in their network to follow suit. So a lot of our role in, in supporting is offering them opportunities to engage in our work to go a step further than, than kind of the, the initial process that they've gone through to become a living wage employer and thinking about how they can engage in our wider projects, whether that's becoming a living wage funder, creating a living wage place, or most recently we launched a living hours campaign which we're asking employers to go that step further to tackle in work poverty uh, by uh, offering more secure contracts to their workers, guaranteed minimum hours, as well as uh, notification of shifts uh, four weeks in advance. And I mean, we, we've only got a very short amount of time, but um, if I could ask a question to, to each of you, I mean, essentially, if you would were to offer any advice into a, a, a route into your organisation, um, is there is there any advice you have for for our participants on, um, yeah, the best ways to uh, to seek employment at your organisations, um, Denise? Yeah, so I know that. Um, posts within the Royal Economic Society are many and varied around our publications um, and around communication strategies and also people of all kinds of sides of the business that hold things together if you like so um, people have to do accounts and people we have a chief exec and so on so those posts are advertised on the website uh, and um, they're also promoted as well through the Royal Economic Society membership so I know that the TUDE network I'm also um, linked to is um, a list of heads of economics departments across the country and we can, res can make use of those too as a way of connecting to new graduates in economics um, but anything in terms of employment with res you can see on the website I think in terms of jobs. Thank you um, and Adash any advice? Um, I think my route into the sector is very different to a lot of people. Um, the think tank sector has a, like you could say, um, like a, what's the word? Uh, like an image that you have to have a, a master's degree or high level education. And um, I mean, I'm currently going through that process with my undergraduate degree whilst working. So yeah, my route is very different. I think with advice, I think just staying connected um, with the think tech sector and particularly with the RSA, um, we have many opportunities for um, internships, I think, which are really good. Um, a couple of them have kind of like disappeared, unfortunately, due to the pandemic. But um, I think internships are a really key part of the organization. Um, they have offered across the research department in particular and also our fellowship department. Um, and they're really good opportunities for those coming out of university um, to gain experience and knowledge in the think tank sector and learn more about um, organizations like the RSA. So yeah, uh, looking at internships um, will be a really good advice that I would give. Thank you so much. And the, the Living Wage Foundation too, I would say similarly, uh, internships are a great entry route into the organization and opportunity to really develop your skills and experience for the sector. Uh, Clive, uh, any advice you would like to offer? Yeah, uh, I, 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 I,
Ikki bekin ben bekin çiz. Ağabey kuzum. And and be and also we we go by pushing has five relationships with 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 two parents, but and has a number of to conference from from several children. She can find out. She can find find out. Working class. So yes, I don't say another thing about about pushing it, and think that in general that we open our meetings that are open to the to the public that can find insight into what we do. Speaking about. And to get IPPTs up, meeting has to be open to the public. So I would be keeping an eye out for those kind of opportunities. So, Clive, just to recap. Um... You might want to just recover what you said about the website, but secondly, the Because Policy Connect has quite a lot of secondments from the civil service fast stream. That's another opportunity. And um, often uh, you're saying that the APPG meetings um, are often open to the public, so it's a good way of getting involved as well. Thanks, Clive. Well, I think that's um, all the time that we've got today for um, for questions. So thank you very much. Um, thank you to the panel for your insights. Uh, thank you to everybody that has attended for listening to us um, and for posing your questions. Uh, the session has been recorded, so I know that it will be available uh, online after the webinar has finished and we will also be circulating some FAQs. So thanks again. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye.